This time I will um, implore us to turn to our Bibles. Open your Bibles to the book of um, Psalm, chapter 50, number 57, verses 9 and 10. Okay. It says, I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations, for your mercy reaches unto the heavens. And your truth unto the clouds. Amen. Let's bow our heads as we pray. The God of the heavens and the earth, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the creator of the heavens and the earth, Lord, we want to thank you for waking us up today. We want to thank you for bringing us down here today. To worship you. Our Father and our God in heaven, this is a special moment because we're asking that you help us tune our hearts so that we can experience truly what it means to worship you. Our God in heaven, we're asking that you forgive our sin sick souls. If there are thoughts inside of us that would distract us from concentrating into this worship, we pray that you remove it. If there are things we've done, if there are things we are going to do that are going to still cause the same distraction, Lord, we pray that you blot it out of our lives. Our Father and our God in heaven, we are just humans. We depend on you in everything. We're asking that you come and be with us today and direct everything that we do here. The words we speak, the way we act, the way we behave, the way we talk to our neighbors down here, we pray that you guide us. Father and our God in heaven, I pray that as we study today during this Sabbath school, that you will enrich us with your blessings. And these blessings will guide us through our lives and lead us to eternity. We pray that this be our experience in Jesus' name. Amen. I can hear you. Happy Sabbath to you all. I'd like you to smile because the Lord is good. Is the Lord not good to you? The Lord has been faithful. We thank God for another beautiful morning that we have to study His words. We thank Him because He's a merciful God. And for the past few weeks, we have been studying about Psalm, the book of Psalms. Today we are going to start, <clears throat> today the, today we are studying lesson seven. Your mercy reaches unto the heavens. I'm not going to teach the lesson, but I have my sisters and brother that will join me in leading out. For the introduction of the, for the memory text, I'll read, I will praise you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations. For your mercy reaches unto the heavens, and your truth unto the clouds. 
The Sami realized that they are spiritually poor and have nothing good to offer to God. That is, they have nothing of themselves that could recommend them before God's holy throne. They understood that they, as all of them, need grace and God's mercy. The mercy of God is what we pray for every time. The mercy of the Lord is what we need to be able to live. The mercy of the Lord is what we need to be able to get things from God. There's nothing we can do without the mercy of the Lord. God's people take comfort in the fact that the Lord is faithful to his covenant. The people that appeals, no matter how pressing at times, are often filled with hope because they are directed to their compassionate Heavenly Father. Fresh experience of God's grace and love strengthen their resolve to worship and serve God and no one or nothing else. God is so faithful. His mercy is so strong. The mercy is what finds us from where we are. His mercy is what raises us up. His mercy is what speaks on our behalf. There is nothing of our own that we can never achieve without the mercy of the Lord. Now I have my sisters here. I have Chidera. I have Olu Alonimi. I have Olu Atufe and Brother God's will. They will say something that I understand about the mercy of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I would like to ask, what does Psalm 136 mean to you? Okay, good morning, Babcock. So, um, be talking on what Psalm 136 means to me. I would say one, Psalm 136 conveys a love message. And if we should look at Psalm 136 very well, his love is internal, is mentioned 26 times, trying to lay emphasis on the love of God and his might and his power. So I'll be le- talking on Psalm 136 verse 4 and 9. So it says, he alone performed great miracles. His love is internal. By his wisdom, he made his heaven and his love is internal. He built the earth on the deep waters. His love is internal. He made the sun and the moon. His love is internal. The sun rules over the day. His love is internal. Love is closely related to mercy. Mercy is being gotten from love. You can only show mercy when you have love. So I would say mercy gives us what we don't deserve. Mercy gives us what we need. And you can see here that how God is magnificent enough in his creation. Genesis 1 verse 2, you say, in the voidlessness of the earth, the Holy Spirit was covering, you know, going around it. And you can see that even amidst that voidlessness, his mercy is still enough. You can still see his grace guiding what is not in its perfect form. So I would say, Psalm 136 verse 9 brings us back to creation. So no matter the voidlessness we have in our life, no matter the void we have in our life, his creation, he created the world out of nothing. And his faithfulness is constant. So I'll talk about that. So it is, okay, okay. Um, Life might be formless. His mercy is internal. Okay, let's just say in the head of God, in the Holy Spirit, because the world was in void and voidlessness, and he said, let there be light. Because he loves, he shows his mercy on the earth. He wanted to add beauty to the earth. That is why he said, let there be light, and there was light. If God can show compassion, if his mercy can reflect in voidlessness, in nothing, so how much more our lives that he has created us and built us in his glory. So that is Psalm 149 verse 9. I'll be talking about Psalm 136 verse 10 to 22. He killed the firstborns of the Egyptians. His love is internal. He defines the Egyptians and he has compassion on them. So I'll say something and I need your response. Even if it's one second for me to be disgraced, tell your neighbor, even if it's one second for me to be disgraced, his mercy will rise up for me because his love is internal. So this is telling us here that Jesus, um, God did not save the Israelites because he just wants to save them. He saves them because he has compassion for us. Even amidst crucibles, even amidst challenges, we can call up on a God that never sleeps because his mercy is internal. We don't deserve his mercy. We don't deserve his love. 
That is why. We don't earn it, but yet he gave us. That is mercy. Mercy is something you don't want. You don't merit. But he's so compassionate enough to the Israelites. And he gave them freedom. He fought for them. And I pray that God will show us mercy in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for it. Thank you so much, Tachidera. God mercy and endure it forever. Now create in me a clean heart. Why do we need a clean heart to serve the Lord? Why do you think God needs to give us a clean heart so you'll be able to so you'll be able to forgive us? Okay. So creating me a clean heart, uh, that Monday's lesson simply talks about, you know, God is not interested in our sacrifices. God is not interested in what we can bring to the table or our contributions. God's main intention for us is to restore us to himself. And like the Bible says, the only thing that can separate us from God is our sins. Just like the lesson talked about David. David was a man who committed a lot of atrocities. He murdered, he committed adultery, but yet the Bible still calls him a man after God's heart. That simply shows us that David understood that no matter the amount of sacrifices he could give, he would not still you know, replace true repentance and true, contrite, uh, true contrition in our hearts. So just like David, we're encouraged to, you know, instead of saying, oh God, just forgive me, we're encouraged to transform our lives, we're encouraged to repent and to turn away from our sin because that is only when God's forgiveness can truly reach us. Thank you very much. If the Lord should mark iniquity, who would stand? Will you be able to stand? At times we behave as if we have the whole world in our hands. We behave as if what we say is final. That the Lord has nothing else to say. <clears throat> that nobody else has anything to offer or to contribute. I say it the way I see it. And I mean it. And nobody can change my opinion. If the Lord should mark iniquity, will you be able to stand? I'd like our brother to discuss that with us. If the Lord should mark iniquity, who will be able to stand? The book of Psalms, chapter 130, the Bible says, A song of ascent, out of the depth have I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul wait, and in his word would I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is abundant redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. The truth is this, if God was to mark our iniquities, none of us today would be able to live. But our God, being so merciful and um, filled with kindness, has made this room an opportunity for us to be accepted. Regardless of how bad we've been in times past, regardless of how bad we are still now, God always has a place in his heart to welcome us. So if God should really mark our iniquities, none of us would be able to stand. God is all merciful, and his mercies endures forever. That is why he has even given us the opportunity to live well. And I pray that the Lord will help us that we would live out our lives according to his biddings in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you have the privilege to forgive someone, try as much as you can to forgive. If you're in the situation, in your position to forgive someone, and people have been begging you, please forgive him or forgive her. Try as much as you can to forgive that person. Because if the law should mark your iniquity, you'll not be able to stand. No one will be able to stand. 
May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Pray to the majesty and merciful God. God is merciful. He's majestic. He's mighty. He's holy. He's a loving God. Can you say something about it? Okay. Happy Sabbath, church. Praise to the majestic and merciful God. When we look at um, Psalm 113 and Psalm 123, there are two things that are depicted there that's the character of God. The first is the majesty of God, and the second is the compassionate nature of God, which is the mercy of God. The first, I'll be talking about those two, but let's start with the first, the majesty of God. The greatness of the majesty of God is expressed in the greatness of his name. When we read through Psalm 113, we will see that... Um, it says a lot about exalting the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord is powerful. The name of the Lord is big. And as such, all men should exalt this name. The name of the Lord is, is like the only thing we can give God right now. The only thing that we humans can do to God is just to worship him. Is to exalt him. Is to praise him. Because that's the only thing we can do. And the next thing is the compassionate nature of God. I'm going to dwell more on this. The compassionate nature of God, which is the mercy of God. God is so big. You know what tells you that, that God, is, God is very big, you know. He's everywhere. But as big as he is, he's still, he's, still, he's still so small that he occupies our hearts. He's still so small that, you know, he takes, he, he takes charge of our lives. God is big, yet he brings himself down so that he could understand us. He could relate with us as humans. Um, and the compassionate nature of God is greatly expressed in the life of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus is a typical example when we're talking about how merciful God, God is and how merciful God can be. You know, he, he has a son, and he, he, he sent his son to this world to live as a man. Christ was here, lived as a man. He went through pains that humans could possibly, you know, feel. And at the end of it all, he was crucified. He died. And Jesus just did not die an ordinary death of possibly sleeping and not waking up. You know, he went through pain. He was embarrassed. He was spat on. He was flogged. He was made to carry his cross. And then it was um, a, tr um, a crown of, of thorns was worn on his head. I, I can only but imagine, we can only but imagine how much pain Jesus Christ felt while he was on earth. How much agony he went through just for our sake. And all of these things that Jesus Christ did was so that me and you will be saved. Christ, Jesus, God is so compassionate, God is so merciful that he's willing to do anything for our sake, even if it means bringing his son da down to die for us. What I'm going to say, to end um, this lesson, this Wednesday lesson, is for us to know that God is big, yes, yes, he it's, it's still, it's, it's still stoops down. If we read Psalm 1, 3, verse 6, I would like to read that. Psalm 1, 3, verse 6 says that, who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth. God is big, yet he humbles himself for our sake. He's big, yet he brings himself down so that we could relate on the same level. So we need to live with that consciousness that God is for us and God is willing to do anything for us if only we accept him. Okay. Amen. Thank you very much. God is beautiful beyond description. He's so marvelous for what? His mercy, his love, no man can fathom. It's too deep for anyone to understand. He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. He cares for you. He cares for me. Forget not all his benefits. I'd like you to look around you. Are you really benefiting from God? Is there any benefit there for you? Your relationship with God, have you ever benefited anything from it? Look within you. Benefits of having a relationship with God. So towards the eighth lesson, as she said, talks about forgetting not the benefits of God. And we can see that the psalmist understood this, and that's why he wrote the Psalms 103, basically talking about you know, how God has delivered the Israelites, how he has forgive, have forgiven them, how he has cleansed them, and you know, healed them. And I can say that personally relates to our lives as Christians, as individuals. There are times when, most of us are students, yes, there are times when, you know, we are scared of that cause or 
we don't know how we're going to pass or it has been deemed hard or difficult, but then God still comes true for us. Even our spiritual lives, God forgives us. He cleanses us. Imagine if there was no forgiveness with God. Imagine the magnitude of our sins, just accumulating sin upon sin. God even not only goes to the spiritual dimension, gives us food, he gives us water, he gives us good health. You know, every one of us here is in school education. So basically, being with God or serving God, having a relationship with God, it's a beneficial thing, it's a two-way thing. You even benefit more, in my own opinion. And so it tells us not to forget God's benefit because if we did something for somebody, we'd want that person to appreciate us, want that person to thank us, how much more God himself. And we should not forget that one of the duties of our, why we were created was basically to praise God, to remember his benefits. So remembering God's benefits um, in our day-to-day -day life is beneficial for us even when we're going through trials or challenges of life, it can help to bring us back to God. That even if God has done this for me in the past, he can still do it for me now. Amen. Thank you very much. Mm. What qualification do you have to benefit from the Lord? You don't need a first degree to benefit from the Lord. You don't need a master degree to benefit from the Lord. You don't need to be a PhD holder before you can benefit from the Lord. God's mercy is for everyone. What the Lord just wants us to do is to stretch out our hands, to ask for mercy, to stretch out our hands and ask him to help us. Remember, Peter was sinking, but he raised up his hands for help, and he was helped. I pray that this morning, that the good Lord will help all of us. Brother David, I don't know if you have anything to say about mercy. All right. Um, good morning, everyone. If you look at the, lesson, the title of the lesson, it says, um, Your mercy reaches unto the heavens. Um, what that brings to mind is that God's mercy is so massive. It's all-inclusive. God mercy, God's mercy is so plenteous that even the heavens can benefit. That God's mercy is not um, restrictive in a way. Like he said, it's not for people who are well-educated. It's not for people who are highly placed. It's not for people who are in the best places of the society. It reaches even onto the universe, the planetary body, bodies, those, those places where there are no lives. If God's mercy can be extended to them, how much more us who he loved and created in his own mercy. And so we are called to understand that God is merciful. Um, Exodus 23 tells us that God is merciful and gracious, abundant in goodness. So the lesson in Psalms tried to let us know that mercy is for all of us. When the devil comes to us with our sins, we should remind him about how merciful our Savior is. When the devil comes to accuse us, when he comes to point at our infirmities, point at our wrongdoings, point at our weaknesses, let's remind him that God is gracious. Let's remind him that God is compassionate. Let's remind him that God wants us to receive the mercy he has given to us. And so this morning, the lesson just wants us to understand that you, you cannot run out of God's mercy. You know, there's, 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 there's a song that says, God's love is so wide, we can't get over it. It's so high, we can't get above it. It's so low, it's so deep, we can't get beneath it. That is how God's mercy is. So I want someone here to have that mindset, to have that, 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 that thought in his heart that God's mercy, we cannot, over, we cannot overflow it. Because where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. We have sinned against him and are undeserving of his favor. Yet he himself has put into our lips that most wonderful plea. Do not abhor, abhor us. For thy name's sake, do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. Remember, break not thy covenant with us. Jeremiah 14:21. When we come to him confessing our unworthiness and sin, he has pledged himself to give heed to our cry. The honor of his throne is staked for the fulfillment of his word unto us. Mm. Expressing God's gracious, graciousness to him encourages the psalmist to say that the Lord has acute righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. Amen. Mm. In our time, when we talk of who are oppressed, who are oppressed our time, if you look at it, our time, all of us are oppressors. In your little corner too, you are oppressed. Try and show mercy. We have learned about mercy this morning. Try and be merciful. The leaders are the one oppressing. In your own little way, how do you oppress? 
in your own little way, how do you, in your little corner, among your friends, your family members, your neighbors, how do you oppress because of that little knowledge that the Lord has given to you? How do you oppress? Remember to be merciful. God will serve a merciful God. Will serve a God that if he should mark iniquity, nobody will stand. Nobody will be here this morning. Will serve a God that does not look at all our wrongdoings, our foolish acts. He does not look. He does not count it. But that does not mean we should continue in sin. God forbid. All we need is grace. Spread for your hand. Tell the Lord that you need him. Tell the Lord that you need his mercy. If things are going on well for you now, it's not because you know how to do it. It's the mercy of God. And if things are not also going well, don't think you are the worst. You need the mercy of God. In every aspect of our lives, we need God's mercy. And as we pray this morning, I'd like us to bow down our heads and ask for God's mercy. Heavenly Father, we will come, up, we will come before you do, this morning. Father, all we ask for, Lord, is for mercy. We ask for your help and for mercy. If that is the only thing we ask for today, Lord, Father, Lord, it was it. Because without your mercy, we are nobody. Even when we, are, when we have thought we are somebody. Father, when we have thought that we are wise, when we have thought we don't need any other person, Father, we have become foolish in our thoughts. I pray you forgive us, Lord. Have mercy upon our lives. Help us, Lord Father, that the word we have heard this morning will not stand against us. On that day when that will come in the clouds of heaven, show us mercy to live above our sins. Empower us, Lord Father, with your own power. And throw yourself in our lives. Help us to live in newness of life. Help us, Lord Father, to be what you want us to be by your own mercy. That you know we need your mercy. We can't do it on our own self. By our we cannot do it. We are weak. Father, help us, Lord. In Jesus' mighty holy name, we have prayed. Happy Sabbath to you all. We thank Auntie Jennifer and her team for leading out in the Sabbath school. We thank you all for those that came early. Thank you so much for being a part of the Sabbath school. We want to ask our ushers to please come behind the stage. Please, all ushers, please come behind the stage now. We want to collect the Sabbath school expense offering. And we'll invite Timothy to sing for us while we collect the Sabbath school expense offering. Please, our ushers, come behind the stage. Thank you. Okay, so we'll be listening to a special song from Dr. Timothy. While our ushers come behind the stage, all ushers, please, your attention is needed behind the stage. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. This morning, I want to sing about the amazing love of God that sees beyond all our sins and our iniquities. And um, be blessed as you listen to this song. I'm amazed. Fine without you. 
I was covering up the secret tears I cried. Then one day someone told me of your mercy and the love you showed on a hill called Calvary. There you died and purchased my redemption. When you broke sin's power and set my spirit free, I'm amazed that you love me. I'm amazed how you can. Through your precious blood, I found pardon. Lord, you know the many times I've gone astray, but I've learned your love is stronger than my weakness, and your ear is open every time I pray. No one else has ever cared for me like you, Lord. Other friends could never be as close to me. I'm not afraid to face the problems of tomorrow. Knowing you are everything I'll ever need. Oh, oh, oh I'm amazed. Good morning, everyone. 
Good morning, graduating class. No, they are not here yet. Are you there? 20, 24 graduating class. Can you make a noise in the house? If you show up for you with faith, can you all rise and let us dance to the front, giving God the praise, the honor, because we know that this, by His grace, is our last week of prayer on this ground. Let us make a noise unto the Lord and let us rise. 2024 July graduates. Yes, go to join us here as well. All right, we are dancing to the front. Wherever we are, let us quickly leave the gallery because you don't have the much time to us. Here. Officers, the provost and the heads of department in the house, these are your labors. Let us also join them. Fathers and mothers, graduating parents can stand up wherever they are, but we are expecting the graduate school to join us. They are uh, uh, the leaders of the university, the provost and the dean. Thank you so much.
For the Lord, no matter the situation, you must be missed out on graduation day in Jesus' name. We want to appreciate our leaders. Thank you so much. Uh, this morning, not only to the graduating class, we are introducing to the glory of God the sponsor of the class for this year 2024. We can do better. We can do better. We can do better. We can do better. We introduce to the public Dr. Ngozi Elizabeth, the sponsor for the graduating class. Great graduating class. Yeah. Ah, great graduating class. Yeah. If you know that July 28, 2024 is sure for you. Great graduating class. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are here. It's time for celebration. For those who came in four years ago, you came in and you were able to do three semesters in a year. Do I have a witness in the house? And in, in three years, you're already in 400 level. It can only be God. It can only be Bangkok University. Ladies and gentlemen, for July 28th, to be sure for us. Are you with me? For July 28th, to be sure for us. We have some little things to do. Let us do the right thing at the right time. Cover up where there is need. Don't forget result upload. The countdown is doing like this. The countdown is doing like this. For those who are going to be celebrated July 28th, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to attend all classes. You are going to do all assignments. You are going to attend all quizzes. You are going to do all exams. You are going to do results upload on time. And ladies and gentlemen, last week in July, we will be celebrated. I welcome you to your year of celebration. Whether you have spent five years or six years, it doesn't matter. What matters is that we are going to be celebrated this year. Is somebody with me? And we are going to dance. We are going to praise God. And we are going to give testimony. I pray that the devil will not steal your joy. I pray 
that you will not miss out. I pray that you will not be found wanting. For those who are in need, Jehovah Jireh will come true for you. For those who are struggling with one sickness or the other, I tell you, Jehovah Rapha will visit you. And I know, I know, I know that my testimony is sure. My testimony is sure. So shall it be for all of us in Jesus' name. Once again, 2024 graduating class. 2024 graduating class. The Lord bless you and keep you. Let us put our hands together for our sponsor. All right, all right, all right. In the house, we have the part time who are uh, busy. Thank you so much. I can see a few of them. We have the postgraduate graduate school with us, the vice president for graduate school, our friend Chidima Abaribe. Hi. All right, good morning and happy Sabbath. <clears throat> Great graduating class. All right, I just want to thank God for making this possible. So let's hang on to that faith and God will see us through. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And uh, we have the ESCO with us. You know them all. Are they doing well? Let us put our hands together for them. They are just starting. They are just starting, you will see. Let me invite the president, our own president, our president, Ato Hengbe Inimitia. Say hello to your people. Great 2024 graduating class! We are almost there, we are almost there, we are almost there. We thank God for bringing us thus far, and by the grace of God, we will finish well. Now, it is my pleasure to stand before you today to tell you some things. First of all, I'd like to remind us that our graduating class week is coming up from the 11th of March to the 19th of March. Are you guys excited? Uh -uh. Let's celebrate, let's thank God, because we're almost done. Now, a few weeks ago, um, a Google form was sent out with about four names for us to pick from, which would be our class name. Now, after collating the results and presenting it before the principal officers of the school, you can't hear me? Hello? Okay. <laughs> we have arrived at a name. Now, it is my pleasure to welcome, to introduce the 2024 Coral Graduating Class of Bangkok! Woo! Great Coral Graduating Class! Resilient Coral Graduating Class! Strong Coral Graduating Class! Ah, we have tried, we have tried and we have... <laughs> We have tried. It happens, it happens, it happens. I just want to urge and implore us. We have come so close. So please, let us not let anything affect us. This is not the time to relent. This is not the time to slack. This is not the time to cool down. Be on fire with the academics and be on fire for Christ. So that come July, 20 to, um, come July 28th, who have full cause to glorify God. Thank you, everybody. Greatest Kora graduating class. We can do better. Kora graduating class. We invite our vice, Deputy Vice Chancellor, who is our father in the house, to give us a chance. Professor. <laughs> Okay, okay. Cora, 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 Cora. We thank the president of the graduating class for unveiling 
making known to us your special name for this year graduating class, Coral Graduating Class. Thank you very much, Madam President. I would like us to know that Coral stands for so many good things. Number one, it's a symbol of modesty. What did I say? Number two, it's a symbol of wisdom. What did I say? Wisdom. Number three, it's a symbol of happiness. What did I say? Happiness. And number four, it's a symbol of immortality. What did I say? Immortality. It is our prayer that this four symbolism will be depicted in your lives one by one in Jesus' name. Amen. My point of standing here at this hour is to charge you and to share a word of prayer with this congregation. I want to let you know that before July 28, 2024, you have a very short time to stand this university. And the God of heaven will see you through. Amen. Mrs. Ngozi, Dr. Ngozi, you said something. You peeped at my note. Too. You did not. The Spirit is speaking. Because we are in it together. And we know what happens towards graduation. Ten days to graduation. Seven days to graduation. Three days to graduation. A lot of running around by some people. That will not be a lot in Jesus' name. Amen. Therefore, do your best now. And clear all uploads and downloads. What did I say? Clear all missing grades. What did I say? Clear all, missing clear all financial hurdles. What did I say? Clear all financial and by the grace of God, we shall smile together. Amen. I would like us to pray together at this time to commit this class to the hand of God for his leading and continual blessing. Dear Father in heaven, on this high Sabbath, as we are coming to the close of the week of prayer, a week of spiritual enlightenment and spiritual blessings. Glory be to your holy name. Because at this moment, before you are your children, who you have led through this university in the last four, five, or six years that their programs had been, you have seen them through. They have enjoyed your mercy they have enjoyed your guidance. They have enjoyed your protection. This is the class that passed through COVID-19 pandemic. And you serve them all. Take all the glory and take all the honor. In spite of all challenge, financial challenges, Father, you saw them through. In the midst of sickness and illness, you gave them healing. Other upheaval academically, socially, Physically and morally, you saw them through. Lord, this morning we are saying, be thou glorified now and forevermore. Amen. We ask that many more days have gone behind us, just a few before us to graduate. We ask this morning that each of us standing here, many more who are not yet here, by your grace will be led for these remaining days. And come July 2028, 20, we shall come to this stadium again. And may declare graduates. Amen. It shall be so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Cora graduating class will be dancing back. We appreciate our leaders in the house. The president of BUSA is here, the alumni director, all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Let us give them good song as we dance.
want to thank the graduating class for 2024. Shall I, I hear a shout out there? Can somebody make a noise? Can somebody make a noise? All right. We praise the name of the Lord for every graduating student for this year, 2024. Nobody will have academic miscarriage. You will all graduate strong and you will graduate well in Jesus' name. All right, we are starting our divine service at this moment, and we expect everyone to respect this hour. And therefore, at this moment, I would like us to rise up while we take the call to worship. Can we be on our feet at this time? I will just simply read from here, and uh, you will follow along with me. Uh, for those of you who have your hymnals, if you don't have it, don't worry. If you don't have it, don't worry. I will read uh, from him number 849. It says, Inside your temple, O God, we think of your constant love. You are praised by people everywhere. And your fame extends over all the earth. You rule with justice. Let the people of Zion be glad. This is our God forever and ever. He will lead us for all time to come. Shall the saints of God say amen to that? I want you to say the amen again. Say it one more time. God bless you. You may, you may just uh, remain standing as we continue with our worship. Why we uh, remain standing, I think we will continue with the worship by inviting the speaker uh, to give uh, the invocation. Can we, the speaker, we come over here. Shall we make him welcome? All right, all right. God, we invite your presence. We know that you are waiting to be with us. You have demonstrated that you are God all by yourself. Last night, oh God, we, we sat with you. We dined with you. And so, God, this morning, we encourage the entire universe to witness what it means to worship you. Come now and dwell with us. Let everything that is done be done to your name, to your honor, 
and to your glory. And we will be careful to honor you always. For we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Please, why we, please, you can just uh, bear with us a little bit so that we don't ask you to be standing and getting up. I mean, uh, sitting and getting up. Um, we have officiated with us this morning. The one that just uh, spoke to us is, and who just prayed, is also the speaker for the week of prayer. You know him so well. And that is Pastor Dr. Andrew Herwood. He is a Brigadier General in the U.S. Army. And uh, we praise the name of the Lord for him. He'll be speaking to us again. I wouldn't say the last time, in a few minutes from now. Now we have the BUSA President, who is also officiating with us this morning. And that is our brother, uh, Justice Okechuku. He will do the opening hymn. And uh, we are privileged to have the senior vice president, academics, who is also officiating with us this morning. He will do the pastoral prayer and a special prayer for the graduating class. We have the university um, uh, vice president for financial administration, uh, also the bossa. He's the one to take the offer tree. Dr. Folurosho Akande. Uh, we have our little boy who will be doing the Bible reading, and that is Ayo Adeleye. You will see him come up here a moment from now to do the Bible reading. We have the graduating class chaplain, uh, our sister Suzanne Aino. He will, do, he will be doing the theme song. And uh, we also have the, uh, the human resources, uh, the director of human resources, uh, Bangkok University, who will do the closing hymn. And that is Dr. Mrs. Abiola Makinde. And the one that is handling the mic, the mic, is the one doing the introduction. Your servant, the university pastor. God bless you. Okay, we'll be having our hymn of worship now, SDAH 212, which is our theme song. And also all the ushers collecting the offering should come to the back of the stage right now. Thank you. Shall we rise for the hymn of worship, please? Go quickly out in the streets and let 
This is the time to speak and to talk to our Father in heaven. The one who gave us life up to this moment. We would like to request that all moments, at this moment, every movement should stop. Because the Lord is in his holy temple. Let us be silent as we talk to him at this time. Oh God, our help in ages past. I hope for now and the days to come. The unchanging one. The gracious one, the loving one. We are standing before you with our heads bowed in respect and in worship. Because we are remembering your goodness over our lives all these days and all these years that have come and gone. Up to this moment, you are still good. We have come this Sabbath morning to worship. And we know that according to your word, that where two or three have come together to do the right thing, you will be in their midst. You are here with us this hour. So, Father, take all the honor, take all the glory, take all the worship, take all the adoration, take all the thanks, now and forevermore. This is the eighth day, as well as the last Sabbath, for this week of special encounter with you and with one another. It has been amazing. It has been wonderful. It has been awesome. It has been a spirit-soaked week. And one day in addition. God, we have felt your divine presence through your Holy Spirit moving in our hearts and in the hearts of many people who are in this open heaven canopy. As your son every morning and in every evening has been given us the message and the word of life, we have seen the message go out with power and have never returned empty-handed. For this we say, glory be to your holy name. Father in heaven, we thank you for the souls that you have brought to your kingdom through the ministry of your man's servant this time around. We thank you for the many more that will enter your kingdom today. May nothing withhold any of them from surrendering to the Lord Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, we take this time also to thank you for the vessel that you have used to minister the word of life to your people this time around. Father in heaven, this morning, give him more unction to function so that we will be blessed one more time and may that blessing remain in our life forever and ever. Father, this week, prayers have been answered. The sick have been healed. The heartbroken have been comforted. Those that were going astray have made a complete U-turn and they are coming back to you. Because the time is almost over. So Father in heaven, as we congregate this morning to worship, one more time, bless your people abundantly. That none will leave this arena without encountering you. Lord, we pray today that every man and every woman that will hear the voice of your servant will have a change of heart and decide to be on your camp all the days of their lives. In a special way, we thank you for the choral greeting class. They were here a moment ago to celebrate your goodness in their lives and also in their state in university. You have seen them through these years and their joys are full. We join them this morning to say, may all the honor and glory be yours as well. I look forward to the end of July this year. Tell them to do all the house cleaning activities to get fully ready for graduation come July 28, 2024. We pray for the teachers, 
We pray for their staff members. Uh, they all work together. May their dreams be realized. We ask that everybody that we have a part to play in making their creation a reality, through your Holy Spirit, work with them, Father, in heaven. We ask this morning in a special way that may none of them be missing on that graduation day. May no sickness or sadness take them away. May no missing grade delay them. May no financial clearing hold any back. Father, we pray that no upload will take them back also. We ask that as they hear your word today, that this word they will hear, before I prepare them for the word of works outside of Cork University. And finally, Father in heaven, we ask that on this high Sabbath, that we bless this congregation again. As we live here today, let it be said that we have been with Jesus. Through your son, manifest yourself. We thank you for answering our prayer and imagination through Jesus Christ, our Lord and coming King. Amen. Happy Sabbath. The ushers are already waiting on us as we give unto the Lord. The Bible says in Luke 6 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over shall be given into your bosom. The concluding verse, part of that verse, is the real challenge. It says, with the measure you give, shall also be given unto you. And the greatest thing we can give is to give our lives to Jesus Christ. When we give our lives to Jesus Christ, all other manners of giving will be easier for us. Is it our means, treasure, time, tr talent? It will not be difficult. And the passage tells us the passcode to prosperity, the measure of our giving, will be proportionally given unto us. So I pray that the Lord will bless us as you give our lives totally unto the Lord and Master Jesus Christ. And all those things we desire, all those things we wish to have to make us happy, live a good life, will be given unto you. And much more, in the final analysis, heaven will be our greatest reward. I pray that this will be our experience in Jesus' name. I want to call on the choristers to come. Okay, they are preparing.
know this is the time of e-money. The church account number at the bank is being projected. So those who have not come with cash can transfer. It's acceptable. Shall we pray on the offering? Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for this blessed Sabbath morning. Thank you, O oh Lord, because you are the owner of our lives. Whatever we have, wherever we are, is by your grace, is by your benevolence. We appreciate you, O oh Lord, because you are the sustainer of life. And this morning, your people have come forth with a token of what you have blessed us with. I pray that this offering will be acceptable in your sight. You will bless the offering. It shall be a seed that will advance the course of your work, not only in this area, but in the world field. And that in the final analysis, O oh Lord, when you come in glory, it shall not be that our act of giving and non-giving will stand against us on the day of judgment. Thank you, O oh Lord, Father, because you have answered our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Babcock University. Um, uh, the Bible reading 7 to 11. Philippians 3, 7 to 11. I read. For we are the circumcision. Sorry. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Nine, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath church. Please just be on our feet as we take the team song. Yeah. 
faithful this morning how many of you are glad that God is faithful that he does not give up on us that in spite of ourselves he's faithful he's faithful he does not give up on us he's faithful he's faithful I'm reaping the harvest about you this morning but I'm glad that God is faithful I'm glad that God is faithful I said 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 I'm glad that God is faithful you ought to open your mouth and say thank you God for being faithful for waking me up again in the morning in spite of myself you're faithful. Ah, yes. Reaping the harvest. God is faithful. And I shall recover it all. Father God, right now we come in the name against every power. Against every spirit. Against every demonic force. God, we come against everything that we cannot understand. But last night, you showed us that the devil is real, but you have more power. God, you've been faithful. And we give you thanks. This is the day that you have made. And we will rejoice. And we will be glad in it. This is your holy Sabbath, a day that you have set aside, regardless of who agrees or doesn't agree, it's irrelevant. You set it aside and you sanctified it and you made it holy. 
And we are now in your presence to worship you. Come now. Come now. One last time. Let us answer the command that I will go. Because it's almost time. You've been faithful. And we give you thanks. We bless your name. And we thank you. Speak now. Speak now. Speak now. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Give God a hand clap, somebody. If you were here last night and you saw the manifestation of how powerful God is, if you had any doubt in your mind that there are forces that you cannot see that are resident in our worship, you were not paying attention. And I'm just, I, I, I couldn't go to sleep last night. I just kept reminiscing of how good God is. Hallelujah. You need to understand that God is real. And he is real and active in the affairs of man. And he loves you. He loves you with a passion. I have been tremendously blessed to have been with you. I've been overjoyed to have been in your
God praise and we give him honor I want to thank the vice chancellor and his wife for their kindness for allowing me to be here just a few words of thanks I want to thank Pastor F.A. and his staff all the chaplains who have been ministering to us and and just making sure that everything runs smoothly. I also want to thank, there's some ladies who have been taking care of me. My, uh, there's a, a Samuelo and Kende and Julienne, some, some other folk who made sure that I had my meals and made sure I ate. I want to thank them as well. And um, I want to thank, I've, 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 I know I have a new little brother uh, uh, Brother Shima, you know, he's been taking care, let's, let's kind of give him, been, been kind of taking care of me. And of course, I want to thank the platform, uh, all the musicians, all the choir, all the choristers, want to thank them as well. And of course, I want to thank especially Victor, he's, he's not there, but, but he, there, there's something unique about an instrument. And, 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 and we, need, we need to understand that music is critical to worship. It's critical to worship. And uh, Victor, you, you, you were able to allow that, that undercurrent for me to make that connection. And I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for that. Let's get right to it because I know the sun is coming up. And just in case the devil decides to shut the power off again, but I, I am just, I'm just amazed at how interesting the devil doesn't understand that God is in control. Can I just get you to turn to the person to your left and say your blessing may be delayed, but not denied. Could you turn to the other person and say your blessing may be delayed, but not denied. <laughs> Ah, I want you to know that your direction is more important than your speed. I just said something. Your direction is more important than your speed. The book of Philippians, it was read in your hearing and in light of the adjustment. Can I just get right into it? Can I just get right into it? A reading from the New Living Translation, it says, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ. Jesus my Lord for his sake I have discarded everything else counting it as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law rather I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. Verse 10. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised the dead. I want to suffer with him sharing in his death so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead in the military as soldiers we operate 
under what we call the warrior ethos. And the warrior ethos essentially says this, I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. And so my message in capsule for you this morning is simply this. Right size your battle space. Know where you stand as a Christian. Number two, reclaim your spiritual authority. Know your battle weapon systems. And then thirdly, and lastly, relinquish or relish rather in the promise of your prize. Know that you have been redeemed. About, about all, I don't know how many thousand folk are here, but you ought to open your mouth right now and give God an amen because you have been redeemed. Our text in this moment compels me to preach from this topic, resurrection power. Because you are a living sacrifice. The tomb that is now empty stands as a witness that the lives of those who went before us matters. The enemies of Jesus vented their rage upon him as he hung upon the cross. Priests, rulers, and scribes joined with the mob in mocking the dying savior. At his baptism and at the transfiguration, the voice of his father had been heard proclaiming Christ as his king. Again, just before Christ's betrayal, the father had spoken witnessing to his divinity but now the voice from heaven was silent no testimony in Christ's favor was heard while suffering and dying Jesus heard every word as the priest declared he saved others himself he cannot save let Christ, the King of Israel, this said, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. Make no mistake about it, beloved. Christ could have come down from the cross, but he was about to right size his battle space. It is because he would not save himself that the sinner has hope of pardon and favor with God the Father so he wouldn't come down. He saw his mother standing with a broken heart, but he wouldn't come down. He heard the laughter of the so-called leaders, but he wouldn't come down. He watched with a broken heart those he had he he, he had help and there were, and, 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 and those he had healed and laughed at him and mocked his body, but he wouldn't come down. He was right sizing his battle space. Can I get a witness from somebody this morning? Many were ready to call him Lord when he wrought miracles. But none acknowledged him as he hung dying upon the cross, save the penitent thief who was saved at the 11th hour. I'm talking about resurrection power this morning. Like so many who have found themselves in the wrong battle space, 
where everyone, including the church, have written them off. Jesus stopped dying to redeem a condemned sinner. For in that critical act, I believe Christ knowing what was about to happen on Sunday morning, he was telegraphing what the possibilities were because he understood he had already said to his father, I will go. It is almost time that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. He was right sizing his battle's pace. Do I have a witness in the house this morning? We've all done something crazy in the past. In other words, we've all have a record and something we do or something we did. And, and we've all done, we, 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 if you are alive, you have done something crazy. That is called sin. So you can walk around like if you were perfect, but we know different. Amen, somebody. You need to understand that we've all done something crazy in the past and we all have a record and everything we have done is written down in a book called the book of deeds truth be told by our actions we're all lost but god there's a hebrew custom which reminds us this morning that if a family lost their property they had to go to a judge and the book of deeds were consulted because the people have their property recorded there. Perhaps there's something similar here in Nigeria. This was done because it was understood that later down the line, if a dependent or family member would come back to redeem the items. However, to do so, the family member must have what the Hebrew customs called a goel. That was a person who was related to the family, but knows the judge. Are you staying with the preacher this morning? Right size in your battle space. We all have done something crazy. And when that time comes, and when that book of deeds are open, we will be happy to know that the person that is speaking on our, on our behalf understands us but knows the judge. Are you with me yet this morning? Jesus knows us. Jesus understands us. Jesus can read our deeds in the book. But Jesus knows the judge. Are you with me yet this morning? Right size your battle space number two. Reclaim your spiritual authority. You, you've got to know your battle weapon systems. For Corinthians 10, 3 and 5 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and bringing every, every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every of Christ. If you in this this building you ought to open your mouth and shout hallelujah this morning because we all have something we need to ask God's forgiveness for I've got a question what is it Andrew on what authority would you approach a person who dated for the first time on a blind date and ask them to marry you somebody got it you don't, you don't know them, and certainly they don't know you. You wouldn't get a yes if you've never met them. You've never dated them. You haven't, you haven't taken them out to dinner. You haven't even sent them a flower. And I'm not talking about arranged marriages. Because even in arranged marriages, your parent knows the people. Come on, talk to me, somebody. But you don't just walk up on somebody and say, I, I like the way you look. I like the way you dress. I, I like the way you... you, you could, could you 
if a man did that to any of you here at Babcock, ladies, you, you, in fact, you might, even, you might not even answer. You might just go like, you crazy and just keep it moving. Come on, shout amen if, you, if I'm telling the truth. But then how come we want to just think that we can just ask God to do things for us, but we don't want to spend time with God? Don't get quiet on me. You, you don't want to get intimate with God. You, you don't want to spend that time with God. You don't want to share your thoughts with God. You don't want to tell God what's going on with you, although God already knows what's going on with you. The church once legislated against those things that God said would be wrong, but gradually we began to tolerate, then accept, that, that which was once unthinkable. The stuff that once made us blush are now flaunted before the eyes of a nation that was conceived in the fear of God. We must reclaim our spiritual authority. You got to know your battle space and your battle systems. You see the stubborn tension in the text this morning consistently ask what are we willing to give up for knowing Christ that's the tension in the text history records in Fox's book of martyr that all the disciples went before knowing because they died for him you see when Paul says I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And then he says in verse 2, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What he was saying to you is that if you're going to live as a Christian, you've got to understand, you've got to die to self. Can I get a witness? The disciples saw their Lord suffered. And Peter, he saw him suffered and he had already told Peter, you're going to deny me. And Peter said, I'm not going to deny you. But of course, you know the story before the cock crew. Peter denied him three times. And so when it became to Peter's, Peter's turn, Peter says, I don't even deserve to die the same way my master died. I want you to take the cross and turn it upside down. And so the disciples who walked with their master all suffered for the gospel. Thomas's body was ran through by a land set at Kalmandel in East Indies. Matthew suffered martyrdom in Ethiopia. He was slain by the sword. Mark's body was dragged through the streets of Alexandria. Luke was hung upon an olive tree in the classic land of Greece. John was put in a pot of boiling oil, but he had so much Holy Ghost, help me out somebody, that they had to banish John on the Isle of Patmos. Peter was crucified on a cross upside down. James the Greater was beheaded at Jerusalem. James the Less was thrown from a pinnacle of the temple and then beat her to death with a fuller's club until his brains gushed out. Bartholomew was slain alive. Andrew was bound to a cross on which he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ to his accusers and to his persecutors until he died. Jude was shot to death with arrows. Matthias was stoned and then beheaded. Barnabas was also stoned to death by the Gentiles at Salamaca, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And the author of our text this morning joins that illustrious group. Though he did not physically walk with the master, Paul Paul says, I have to live resurrection and after all the persecution and all his trials and all his circumstances, Paul says, it's not enough just to suffer for Jesus. I'm ready to die for the gospel. Open your mouth this morning and shout amen. 
some chaplains, some pastors, some individuals. You need to understand that you are not working alone. You have power with you. Paul says, thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I was shipwrecked in weariness, in sickness, in painfulness, in hunger, in thirst, in cold, in, 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 in nakedness. Beside all that, Paul says, I had the church folk to contend with. I had to care for all the chapels under my responsibility and deal with the various ungodly attitudes from some of the some of the folk in the area Paul says I had I, I had to uproot my family and move every two or three years Paul says I've got to deal with what it means to be here at Babcock help me Holy Ghost it doesn't it doesn't make any difference Paul says I'm ready Paul says, I'm ready. I think I've gone to the schools of hard knocks, Paul says. I'm, I'm trying to talk to somebody here this morning. Paul says, I think I've gone to the schools of hard knocks. And I'm ready now for you who are at Rome. Rome, watch out, Paul. Here comes Paul. And so Paul says, I'm ready. I will preach to the very Chateau Deef, that castle of death, which divine providence has preserved up to this very day in memory of those saints who love not their lives unto death. If you, can, if you, Google, if you Google it, you discover that the mud that is found in the Ampere Theater that we looked at this past week was created by the drop of the Christian martyrs who died for their Lord. Anywhere you pick up a bit of mud and squeeze it, a drop of Christian blood will come out. And now in a lonely prison cell on death row in a damp and dingy dungeon underneath a dungeon, a blind man in a dark room writes a courageous letter to a young preacher. He says, I'm ready now to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. Paul says, I'll fall the good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Hence there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness that the Lord, the righteous judge shall give to me on that day and not to me only Paul says. I'm talking about resurrection power this morning but unto all those who love my appearing. He writes to this he writes his beloved church at Philippi but what things have gained to me those I count them all as loss for Christ yea doubtless and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count it but down that I may win Christ and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that, that I may know him. And the power is his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made comfortable unto his death, that if by any means I might attain unto the righteousness of the blood of Christ in Rome. Paul went from, I'm ready to preach the gospel, to I am ready to die for Jesus in Rome. He knew that by going, he was signing his death certificate. At the end, he was beheaded by Nero in Rome that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. It seems today, my brothers and sisters, that by the life of Paul and the other martyr apostles, there is a, there's a very, very thin line between living for Jesus and dying for Jesus. And those who are fools for Christ's sake 
sometimes in their foolishness of preaching, they don't care if they cross over that line. Can I get a witness? You see, for me to live as Christ and to die as gain, whether I live or whether I die, I belong to the Lord. That is, the, that, is that divine dilemma of a truly dedicated Christian. You need to understand, the Bible teaches us that once you say a thing, once you commit your heart to Jesus, then you really can't really come back. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. My musician needs to move to the music. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Romans 8, 36 says, As it is written, for, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep to the slaughter. 2 Timothy 2, 11 and 12, listen to me this morning. Listen to me this morning. It is a faithful saying, for if we, if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also deny us. Colossians 3, 3, 4, ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. 2 Corinthians 4, 11 says, for we which live and always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in the mortal flesh that I may know him the Christian the ancient Christians endured mockings and scourging and, and fires and lions and then Paul turns around and says in Hebrews eleven forty, but they without us should not be made perfect the true test of discipleship then beloved the true test of discipleship is not church membership because Jesus said other sheep I have which are not this fold and to my my brothers and sisters who are here who are Adventists because I've talked to you all week and I know there's there's some tension points you need to you, you, you need to understand that you can walk with your head up if people don't understand who you are, that is their problem, not yours. Don't dumb down your blessing to make other people comfortable. I said don't dumb down. Walk in the anointing that God has called you in. Walk in that anointing. If your fellow students don't understand you, that is their issue. You live the life. Don't just talk the talk, but walk the walk. The true test of discipleship is not vain religiosity because Jesus said harlots and the publicans will go to heaven before some of you. The true test of discipleship is not study groups and symposiums and forums ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. The true test of discipleship is greater love hath no man than this. But that he should lay down his life for his divine friend. Hail Caesar! We who are about to die, we salute you. I love the movie Gladiator. It's one of my favorite movies. That's what they said when they went out as a Roman soldier in the amphitheater. As they were fighting each other burying each other in their own blood those centuries before they went out to die for Rome which they love they stood before their Caesar and they saluted him and said hail Caesar we who are about to die we are happy to die for Rome we salute you as paradoxical as it may appear this morning the commitment to die for Jesus is, is a question of life rather than death. 
For what shall we live is answered by the same question, for what shall we die? For if a man is not willing to die for a divine cause, he or she is not ready to live. Can I get a witness, somebody? The Bible teaches that it is a dangerous thing to live one day without dying for a cause. And this, this, my brothers and sisters, is the curse of the 21st century. That we have everything in the world to live for and absolutely nothing to die for. If Paul is correct, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. If Paul is correct in his counsel, then a man or a woman is truly living only they're only living when they have learned a cause to live for divine cause. You got to reclaim your spiritual authority. You got to know your battle weapon system. And so I'm so honored to be blessed to serve with an organization. We call ourselves soldiers. You're soldiers too. Our core values in the army is Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage. You got to know your spiritual authority. And lastly, relish in the promise of your prize. Ah, yes. You have been redeemed. Can you just tell the person to your next, next to you, you've been redeemed. Turn to the other person. I know, I know the sun is out. Trust me, this is, not as, this is not as hot as what hell's going to be like. Hell's going to be much hotter than this. You've been redeemed. The song said, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed by the what? The blood of the Lamb. We serve a timeless God. He is. Your past is in God's present. I want you to hear me this morning. Your present is in God's present. And your future is in God's present. You see, for us, we have a future. We have a present. And we have a past. Where God sits in heaven, he can just look to his left and he can see your future in his present. Are you with me this morning? If you're right in front of God, he can look directly at you. You are in his present. He's in your present. If you've passed and God can look to the right and see what you've done, your past is still in his present. I'm trying to talk to somebody this morning that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Remember, we have a a goel we have someone who understands us but also knows the judge someone who is related to the family and knows the judge you need to understand that you can look to Jesus you need to understand that you can trust in Jesus you need to understand that Jesus is Lord you can look to him because he walked through scripture and in every age and every stage of the human condition, Jesus was judge and he was the bridge. He is related to us and he knows the judge. I said he's related to us and he knows the judge. I said he's, some, I said he's related to us and he knows the judge. He's related to us and he knows the judge. He's related to us and he knows the judge. He's related to us and he knows the judge. You've got to get to know him. And sometimes his name might be different in different, in different books. But as we looked at this week, Genesis may call him Shiloh. Exodus may call him the I Am. Numbers may call him the Sauron Scepter. Deuteronomy may call him the Rock. Joshua may call him Captain of the Lord's Host. Job calls him Redeemer. Psalm calls him Lord and Shepherd. 
Solomon calls him the beloved. Isaiah calls him wonderful counselor. A mighty God, the everlasting father. The prince of peace. Daniel calls him the fourth man. Micah says he's the one going forth from everlasting to everlasting. Haggai says he's the desire of all nations. Malachi calls him messenger of the covenant. Matthew calls him savior. Mark calls him the son of man. Luke calls him the great physician. John calls him the word made flesh. Acts says his name is above all other names. Thessalonians declare he's the one who descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. Hebrews Hebrews says he is a great high priest and Jude says he is able, he is able, he is able to keep you and I from falling and to present you faultless before his glory with exceeding joy. And then John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And John said, I saw him high and lifted up. He's Alpha. He's Omega. He's the beginning. And he's the end. The question this morning, do you know him? Do you know him? How many of you can say this morning, do you know him? I want to say one last thing to you this morning before I take my seat. We've talked about I will go because it's almost time. I want to say one last thing to you this morning before I take my seat. No longer must you look at the cross as a symbol of death. But the cross of Jesus Christ is a symbol of the strongest living power. The cross is a symbol of a well-lived life that death could not claim. The cross is a symbol in the fact that in Jesus, life is stronger than death. In Jesus, truth is stronger than a lie. In Jesus, peace is stronger than confusion. In Jesus, meekness is stronger than force. In Jesus, giving is stronger than taking. And concord is stronger than discord. And love is stronger than the grave. That's what the cross means this morning. Jesus says, I've got to go to the cross. I've got to teach the world that what the strategy of the cross means that the strategy of the cross means that whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die so you see they tried to kill Jesus but you cannot kill truth they tried to kill Jesus but you cannot kill the God that I may know him and the power of his resurrection my time is gone. I've got to sit down. That I may know him. It is my hope this morning that you've got a deeper glimpse this past week. It is my hope for the same two, the same for the other two locations as well there's always time to break the chains that surround your life there's always time to break those chains you've got to be very clear to right size your battle space know where you stand as a Christian Reclaim your spiritual authority. Reclaim it. It's yours. And know your battle weapon systems and then you've got to relish in the promise of your price. Know that you've been redeemed. Father, even now we move as we bring this portion. We bring this portion to a conclusion. 
But Lord, I'm feeling in my spirit. You're telling me in my spirit there's still some chains that needs to be broken. We have some individuals who have already made a decision to go all the way with you. But Lord, there's still some others. And I want to be obedient, Lord. I, this is not about time, but I want to be obedient, Lord. There's, you, want to give, you want to give at least some folk one last chance. So if you, if you are one of those individuals, you need to move quickly and come down, come down. You want to be in that group. We're going to leave here and we're going to the baptismal pool. Don't have time. Don't have a lot of time this morning. If, if God is speaking to you this morning as the choir begins to sing that song, break every chain because there's still some chains. Hopefully this week there's some chains was broken. The chain of pornography that you're struggling with in your life, hopefully that's broken. The chains of jealousy, hopefully those chains are broken. The chains of resentment and not even knowing why you resent your classmate. Those are the deeper chains that is so personal to you. It is our hope that those chains are broken. Beloved, you need to understand. Thank you, Lord, for just taking the sun away and sending that smooth shade. Thank you. Thank you. We bless you for small things. Thank you. We still believe in the fact that God can break chains. Is there somebody here? There's one more person here. Don't worry about. Don't worry about. We're slightly over. We know this. We know this. But is there somebody here this morning? Just, just one more person who are, who, who are brave enough to just come down and take my hand. Just one more. Just one more person. Just one person. Just one person. God is telling me there's one person. Oh God, there's one person. Oh, break every chain. There's one more sister. Hold your head. There you go. God bless you. Come on. Somebody come lead Come on. Is there somebody else? Is there somebody else? Is there somebody else that I may know him? I know we've got a whole lot of other folk, but but you didn't make that. You didn't seal the deal. The devil was angry last night. But if you didn't seal it last night, is there somebody else? Just one more person, one more brother. Just one more person. All breaking. There is power. There is power. There is power. Is there somebody else? Oh, bless you, sister. Bless you. There is power. Oh, come on, sir. Walk like that quick. Yes, sir. Break this chain. Is there somebody else? There's somebody else. That I may know him. Break him. God bless you, brother. Come on. There's somebody up there. I know the devil is telling you it's far, but it's it's not that far. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get about. Get about you. Break every chain. Break it. Break every chain. Break it. Come on, sis. Come on. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. My brother. There's power in the name of Jesus. Come on. I had a change. God bless you. There's somebody else. You want to join the baptism that's about to happen? Somebody waited for me. I was messed up. I was lost. Bright, brilliant, but I was lost. Somebody waited for me. I know we have a schedule, but but it, but I want to wait for that. God bless you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, give it up for him. Give it up for him. This takes courage. This takes courage. Any coward can sit down. Any coward can sit down. It takes courage to stand for Jesus. Break every chain. Come on. Is there somebody else? I hear. Is there somebody else? 
Is there one more person? God bless you, my brother. Meet that young man. Meet that young man. Meet that young man. Meet that young man. God bless you. I hear the chains. Oh, Lord, I hear the chains. Break every chain. Oh, break every chain. You don't have to think about why they're coming. They're coming. God bless you, sister. Today is the day of acceptance. Today is that day of acceptance. Go meet that young man, somebody. Go meet that young man. Go meet that young man. God bless you. God bless you. There is power, Lord. We stand right here on the authority of Jesus Christ. Recognizing, God, that the devil tried last night and failed. And he is trying again and he will fail. Meet that sister. God bless you. Meet that other sister. God bless you. Come on. Come on. Meet that young man. Meet that young man. Go meet that young man. God bless you. God bless you. Break every chain. Break it. Break it. Break it. Break it. Break it. Break it. I hear the chains fall. Oh, we bless you. This is this is what it's about, beloved. This is what's about God bless you. Meet that young man. Meet him. Meet them. Meet, meet them. Bring them. Break the chains. I hear the chains fall. Oh, break every chain. Break every chain. We don't know what the chains are, but you wrestle with them. You wrestle with these chains. And we believe that God is still in the business of breaking chains. Meet that young man. He's moving. Meet that young man. I hear the chains falling. This is why Babcock exists. They can go to any institution and get a degree. Any degree can give them. But only this one can give me eternal life. Hallelujah. We're going to wrap this up. We're going to wrap this up. We're going to wrap this up. But you want to break every chain this morning? Is there somebody else this morning? Is there somebody else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your sister. Hold your head high. Hold your head high, sister. Hold, hold your head high. You have nothing. Hold your, there's, there's another sister. She's coming from the podium. I can see her coming. Meet that sister. Meet her. Meet that sister. Meet that brother. Meet that young man. God is looking for Joshua's. God is looking for Caleb's. God is looking for Deborah's and Esther's. Meet that young man. Meet that young woman. God is God is calling them. God is calling. If you if you know how to pray in your heart, pray in your heart. Meet that sister. Meet that young man. Break every chain. It was not my intention to make a call this morning because I know it's a packed day. But under the authority of the Holy Spirit, I have to be obedient. And he told me that there's still some decisions to make. And I bless God that I was obedient. Give God a praise in here, somebody. Give God a praise. There is power in the name of Jesus. I hear the chains fall. Can you hear the chains fall? I hear the chains fall. 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 Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, yes. I hear a chance for The devil tried, but the devil's alive. God bless you, sister. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, sister. God bless you. God bless you. You don't have to be worried about why they're coming. That's none of your business. Why are you still sitting? Ah, meet that young man. 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 Meet that young man.
need that young man. I hear the change. 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 Break every chain. Hallelujah. God bless you, sister. Come on. Come on, sister. Come on. Come on. Come on, sister. We wait. We know it's, the sun is hot. But like I said just now, trust me. Hot hell's going to be hotter than this. Walk with it. Walk with it. The, the sister's coming. Come on, you're encouraging somebody. Meet, meet them. Come on, meet them. Meet them. Meet them. Meet them. I know I gotta quit, Pastor. I know I gotta stop. I know I gotta stop. I know I gotta stop, but they're still coming. They're still coming. Thank you. Come on. Come on. God bless you, brother. God bless you. The devil doesn't like this. The devil doesn't like this. Come on. This takes courage, beloved. This, this, take, this takes courage. This is courageous right here. This takes courage. Come on. Come on. Give it, give it up for them. Come on. Give it up for them. Come on. Come on. Chain. Break. They're still coming. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Every single chain. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The Bible says, for your mighty true God, there is no temptation taking you which has come to man. But God is faithful that you will not be, you will not be tempted against what you can manage. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, move to it. Move to it. Yes. Yes. Come on. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Break every chip. Break every chip. Break every chip. Break every chip. Sister's coming all the way back. She's coming down. I see you coming. She's climbing. She's coming out. Meet her. Come on. Meet her. Encourage her. Break every chip. Ah, this is what it's about. Every chain, break them. For those of you who made a commitment yesterday and you want to join them for this special prayer, you can come as well. You made that commitment yesterday and you want to come and join them, feel free to come. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's salvation in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. Every chain. Every chain. There's nothing you're dealing with, my young friends, that the power of God cannot break. Am I not telling the truth? God can break any chain. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Come seal the deal this morning. Come on, seal the deal this morning. Come on, seal the deal. Devil can't put the lights out because the sun is out. Come on, get a, can I get a witness? The devil can't put the lights out because the lights are out. God bless you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, sister. God bless you. Break every chain. I see my sister still. Come on. Hallelujah. Has God been good to you this morning? Do we serve an awesome God? Do we see, serve an awesome God? I see you coming, brother. We're going to wait. We're going to wait for you. We're going to wait. Break every chain. I see you. I see you. Come on. I see you. God bless you. I see you. Come on. I see you. Come on. Give it up for them. Give it up. Give it up for them. Come on. Give it up. Come on. Break every chain. Every single chain. Come on. Some of you are still wrestling with some things. and You know you need to be up here because you need that chain to be broken. 
You need that chain to be broken. I don't have to say who you are. You know who you are because the spirit of the living God is actually talking to you right now. God's voice is talking to you right now. God's spirit is talking to you right now. This is not about me. This is not about the chaplet. This is not about Babcock. This is about you and making sure that you're called and your election has been secured. You need to get up out of your seat if the spirit of the living God is talking to you this morning. He's trying to tell you this may be the last time that he's going to be booing and wooing and trying to bring you. You don't know what's ahead of you. If God's voice is talking to you, get up out your seat and let that chance fall. Break it this morning. Bless you, they're coming, they're coming down. They're coming down from the way the top balcony we see. We know it's a long way to roll, a long way to walk, but come on. They told me I can take a few more minutes because you're still coming. I want to be respectful of your time and your schedule. But decisions are being made for salvation. These are these are eternal decisions. Break every chain. In the name, in the name, in the name, come on, on the authority of Jesus Christ, and the power of his resurrection. God bless you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I know it's hot. I know it's hot. Drink some water, but hell's going to be hotter than this. Trust me. Hell's gonna be hot, hell's gonna be harder than this. Seal the deal this morning. Seal the deal. Seal it. Seal the deal. Break every chain. Lord, we, we're gonna wrap this up. 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 There's power. Break every chain. 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 I see you're still coming, brother. I see you're still coming. Break every chain. We wait for you. Break every chain. We wait for you. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Oh, the spirit is so sweet. The spirit is so sweet. God has been so faithful. God has been so faithful. God has been so faithful. I may never see you again. This may be my last ever time seeing you, looking upon your faces. But because of the commitment that you've made this morning, if you stay faithful, I will see you again in the Holy Land. Amen, somebody. You made a decision this morning that no one can take from you. God, understand, God understands the tears. God understands why you're crying. God knows. God understands. God is clear. Thank you about his love for you. But the decision that you've made, it took courage. It doesn't matter what your classmates think about you. Your classmates can't even save themselves. Think about that. 
you are concerned about people who can't even save themselves you treat them with respect but you walk with your head high because you've made a commitment to save Jesus Christ this morning and my Bible tells me and I believe my Bible that when we commit ourselves to the Lord and we put ourselves in his hands let it out let it out let, let the tears fall let, let them fall let, 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 let them fall when we're in God's hands then we become his responsibility so he's gonna walk with you he's gonna talk with you and he's gonna fight your battles the road might not be easy but the destination has been secured someone should have just shouted amen the road might not be easy but the destination has been secured so the journey might be rough the journey might be really really rough but the prize has been secured loving father this morning God I just come to you with a clear understanding that you are sovereign you're sovereign God you love us you love us with a passion Your children have come to this altar. It was not my intention to make another appeal this morning, God, but you loved them so much you knew that they needed to come. And you caused us to wait for them because someone waited for us. God, right now I commit their souls into your care. These young men who are standing tall like David's, like Daniel's. These young women who are standing like Esther's, like Deborah's. They're yours. They're yours. They belong to you. And today, Lord, they seal the deal. They said to the enemy, my body doesn't belong to you anymore. There's still someone sitting right now as we speak who, who knows that they should be here, she should be here, he should be here because they keep abusing their body. Lord, let them come and get that chain broken. so that you can declare your body belongs to me God we don't know why all these young people are here and to be honest it is none of our business we don't need to know but what we know Lord is that they are bright they're an intelligent and they're they are intelligent enough to know that what they have isn't enough for without you they don't have enough and they've come to the altar this morning to simply say I need more of you Lord I ask that you would bless them I ask that you would keep them I ask God that you will cause your face to shine upon them and be gracious unto them. 
I ask, oh God, that you will lift up the light of your countenance upon them and give them your peace. Give them the assurance that the chain has been broken and they can now walk from victory to victory. Lord, we love you. And we adore you. We surrender ourselves to you today. We surrender ourselves. We surrender our hearts. We surrender our bodies. We surrender our brains. Those individuals who have been struggling academically, Lord, you can quicken their minds. I pray, God, that you would work a miracle in them. That their professors would after they see their next exams would be wondering whether or not if they cheated because it's like night and day lord do this because you have been faithful those who are struggling for finances lord multiply the bread and the fish break that chain break that chain Father, we love you. We adore you. We honor you. And we thank you. Wrap your arms around them. Hug them with your grace. Squeeze them with your mercy and kiss them with your love and we'll be careful to honor you always for we ask it in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah right, please um, we would like you to just move behind the stage um, so that we can share some information with you please just move behind the stage briefly as we do that god bless you uh, we want to quickly also sorry just a minute um, we want to quickly announce as we close that those of us who also indicated yesterday to be baptized and those who indicated after the program uh, yesterday we are moving straight to pioneer church where the baptism is going to take place we are going to gather there please let's find our way to pioneer church and god bless you and uh, the lord has done a miracle for us today and more miracles are on their way god bless you we will still sing before we close we want to close formally let's shall we all rise as we take the theme song it's almost time
quickly as you are moving, I will uh, implore you to listen to this. By 5 p.m., we are all expected to be back here. 5 p.m. And there will be baptism as has been announced. Graduating class offering will also be taken later on this evening. So please come prepared. All those who officiated at the Sabbath school, please come to the back of the uh, podium, please, for just some information. If you have testimonies, testimonies for this evening, we implore you to also see us at the back of the stage. God bless you. Shall we all share the grace together? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fruit of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go with God's blessings and see you in the evening. Bye for now. Hello. The cafeteria will be open at 10.30. 10.30 is when the calf will be open. 10.30 is when the calf will be open. If you go there now, you'll just be there for prayer until 10.30. <laughs>